Praise the Lord. All right, let's see here. We're going to um, go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 if you are there. Say amen. amen. Let me see. We're going to read the first seven verses. Uh, beginning at verse number one. Are you ready? Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Together. Consider, Consider what, what I, I say, and, and the, the Lord, Lord give thee understanding in all things. things. Praise God. Our Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and thank you again for uh, access to your throne. And we ask now that Lord for the next few moments that you will take control and minister the things that are important for us and Lord God in the audience today in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you we take dominion and authority over the atmosphere the airwaves in the powerful name of Jesus Christ we forbid and we cancel every interference to thy word O oh God by the authority of Jesus name we break its power and we forbid its operation and we cancel its assignment and command it to desist and cease in the name of Jesus Christ and Lord we lose your presence now and ask that your presence will have free course in this place in Jesus name and everybody said amen God bless you you may be seated we are uh, want to talk a little about spiritual disciplines spiritual disciplines are important as children of God, we actually discipline is important in any walk of life. Anything that you do, there has to be discipline. Whether you're an Olympic uh, runner or participant, whether you're a uh, doctor, lawyer, dentist, same is so with a Christian and minister. There has to be discipline. And that's kind of what I want to talk about. The importance of spiritual disciplines. And Paul mentions here in Timothy. But I'm going to read also in Ephesians. To go along with that Ephesians chapter 6. I have to discipline my eating habits. Am I right? If I don't, you uh, might have something to say about my appearance after a while. Ephesians 6, verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit 
which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So I'm going to see if we can tie in these two passages of scripture here, scriptures, for what uh, I believe the Lord has pressed upon my heart. Going back to Second Timothy, this epistle was Paul's last epistle written to his son in the gospel, Timothy. So whenever God takes me to Timothy or Titus in a message, I know that first and foremost is for me and the ministers, whether it's on TV or whether it's in our place here. So ministers, perk up your ears and listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to us today. So Paul tells Timothy, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In verse 3, he also encourages him to endure hardships as a good soldier. I mean, know we are Christian soldiers. In the army of God. I hope everybody at least knows a little bit concerning that. That you are a soldier in the army of God. Uh, when Uncle Sam enlists people in service. There's expectation. They train them. In case there's a war. They train them. Right? So that they'll be equipped for war. When war time comes. And they go through the basics, and uh, and they must learn and pay full attention to what they learn in basic training, because it will come in handy if they ever have to go to war. Are you still with me? Now, as the natural, so is the spiritual. We're in the army of God. We're in God's army, and seeing that we're in God's army, Paul was sharing to Timothy. Now remember, Paul is getting ready to pretty much go off the scene. And all of the churches that he's established, all of the things that he has done, all of the teachings, the people that were saved, and all the battles he fought. Now he's going to rest some things on Timothy's shoulder. Timothy now must put forth what he's been taught. It's one thing to become a student, but it's another thing to display what you learn. Isn't that right? And if you learned well, then normally in regular life or as a student, after you come out of college, when you learn well, when you go to apply for a job and you get on this job, you apply what you learned. Same way with God. So that's why it's important that we learn when God is teaching us. He teaches us out of his school and he teaches us through the, uh, the people that he's called. He teaches us. And so Paul, Timothy was no less. He traveled with Paul on various occasions and he was converted unto Paul's ministry. And so he got to see firsthand some thing how Paul suffered in the gospel and as he was um, establishing churches and going about itinerating, he saw some of the crucibles of the ministry. He saw some of the difficulties, the hardships. He saw the spiritual warfare. He saw those things. And so now he's telling him, uh, you must be strong in this grace. Timothy had a task, a difficult task ahead. 
there were those false teachers there in the midst and they were trying to undo that which Paul had done and they were going in the different churches and teaching half truths or things that they didn't really wasn't fully familiar with so uh, but Timothy and he was a kind of a timid person and it wasn't something that Timothy looked forward to but uh, God would empower him as he in faith would begin to operate and Paul knew that so he began to encourage him in the things of God and he began to look in the spirit and God began to show him some of the things that was the church was going to encounter and some of them were not pleasant at all and he gave through prophecy and began to tell him in the last days difficult dangerous perilous times are going to come and men are going to be lovers of themselves lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God and he goes on to tell him some other things and uh, but in the face of how people will become more corrupt he gives Timothy uh, the duties of a faithful minister he tells him about his personal life his personal life needs to be in order and also is transmitting the truths of God's word. And so in the first few verses that I read, you covered most of that and uh, what Paul was talking about. Um, and one of the things that he said in those verses, a workman, an approved workman who correctly handles the word of life the word of God an approved workman so that means he had to study right study and so it is with the Timothys today uh, I find that we have to study and study prayerfully and study and use the materials and listen to the spirit of God and, uh, and, and allow so that God can help us and to unfold the word of God to help us because if it's not understood properly we're certainly not going to be able to walk in it and so as we study God opens up the word of God to us and um, so Paul was encouraging him two things he said be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and endure hardness as a good soldier and so let's look at the, um, the first thing he said Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. There is an implication there, right? It implies that it's not in our strength. It implies that there is grace sufficient for the battle and for warfare. But it's only in Christ Jesus. So he says, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And someone says, rightly interpreted, it means in the, in the present tense, be continually strengthened. And I like that because uh, that's normally how, I, uh, how God deals with me. We get to a point where we need strength and he strengthens us, continually strengthens us. And there's nothing we will face that as we come to God in expectation and in dependence, that he doesn't give us the strength to go through and overcome. And, but it's in, in the graces in Christ Jesus. Only available there. And so then he says, the things that you've heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So first Timothy, in being able to rightly divide the word, he was able to us to be able to teach the others as he observed their lives. And they love the Lord and, uh, and, and Jesus Christ and commit themselves to him uh, and then teaching them the word so that they will be able in turn to turn around and teach others also. Those that are in uh, and, and this word faithful means uh, reliable, trustworthy men. And uh, so he's, he was to observe their lives first of all and then he was to teach them. And then they would turn around and do this duplication or teaching others concerning the word of God. Then he said, you, thou therefore endure hardness. Endure hardship as a good 
soldier of Jesus Christ. It is so important that we understand that we are in a warfare. And um, seeing that we are in a warfare, it is not nice or it's not good and healthy to pretend that it'll just go away and we don't have to get involved. Right? There's no way Uncle Sam is going to enlist somebody in his army. He's just going to sit on the sideline. We are in a battle. And this is what Paul wanted Timothy uh, 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 to understand. We are we're in a battle. And the battle is against the host of hell. They are in the, uh, the kingdom. They're in the kingdom. Somebody say kingdom. They're in the kingdom of darkness. And we are in the kingdom of light. There will be many battles. So we, we must understand that. And we must govern ourselves accordingly. Somebody say, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's all that. It doesn't mean that it's going away just because of somebody's opinion. Isn't that right? We are in a warfare, saints. So Paul wanted Timothy to understand. So one of the first things he said, you have to be strong. And I go back to what God told Joshua when Joshua took as a successor of Moses. Uh, uh, he said, Moses, my servant is dead now. And he said, uh, you come on and go over this Jordan. As I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. And as Joshua observed Moses and all the mighty thing that God did, now it fell his lot to begin to lead. And this was when it wasn't funny. Isn't that something? There's something about having to lead that will test everything in you because there are forces that come up against you that don't come up against you until you're there in leadership. So it's important. So Paul wanted Timothy to understand this. You must be strong in the grace, not in yourselves, but in the grace. There is help for every situation there is help for every trial and I go back over these 40 years and I remember there's been many battles that we've fought through the power of Jesus Christ and no doubt as God said we'll live a long time there'll be many other battles but there are battles there are, is warfare I just want to make sure that we understand it's a war that we're in this is not some game that we're skipping about this is war and so Paul understood that. And um, so now he's trying to make Timothy, he passed on to Timothy things that were so important as he's going to get ready and be beheaded in a, uh, in a short future. So be strong. God told Joshua three times in the conversation, be strong. Be strong. Be strong. The services, this good army has no place for weakness. Isn't that right? And, I, you know, I had to, God had to do some stuff in me. Because there are things I just did not want to face. But God, because he's making a soldier out of me, he began to put more strength and backbone because you will face things and Satan will challenge you to the end so you must be strong in the grace of God you can't give over to this flesh the flesh loves what it loves you cannot give over I'm talking to the Timothys today you must be strong now. This is what I feel like God is wanting us to say. First, he was dealing with me about it. Be strong. And God says, as you're strong and you stand, when you stand, I'm going to stand right there with you. I'm going to be right there with you. So you never have to wonder, well, God, can I do this? Well, I, God, be right there with you, but you must be strong. Well, you say, why are you putting such emphasis on being strong? Because 
you'll turn back in battle if you're not strong. And um, so I remember in the Bible, the passages there, when Joshua and the others went to Ai and they got a little cocky because they were winning the battles. And what we must understand is God fights our battles. If you win a few battles, you must walk softly because you didn't win that battle. It was because you were connected and united with God that he defeated your enemies. And so Joshua and them got a little cocky because they were beating everything in sight, went and taking uh, uh, um, territory, and, and then all of a sudden they, Joshua sent some scouts out there to scout out, scout out the land. AI and he looked, they they came back and said, oh it ain't, it ain't you know small place ain't too many people they don't 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 send the army there just pick a few select people and then go up they, you know they became more confident in their own self so thinking and speaking like they won the battle and their army was so great. Just send a few people. You ain't, don't, 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 don't bother to put this whole army in a little few people. So they did. Send a few people up there. And boy, they couldn't stand before them. The enemy turned around and chased them. And they fled. And so Joshua, this was one of the first battles that gave him a trouble, some trouble. So Joshua just fell on his face, oh God, you know. And, you know, I mean, God says, get up from there. Get up from there. You know, sometimes we start to feel sorry for ourselves. You know, oh Lord, you know, I've been trying to serve you, been trying to do right, and da 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 da, and just making these little complaints. God says, hush. Just hush. Do you not know you're in a battle? And so sometimes God has to encourage us. So Joshua, he had him to get up. He said, Achan had, he said Israel has sinned. And so he dealt with that. But um, the thing that I, as we move on here, he told him, be strong in the grace of God. And that grace of God is there. He will help us through. No matter what we face, he will help us through it. But we must put our trust in the Lord. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide forever. They that trust in the Lord. David said, my heart's fixed. Trusting in the Lord. So we've got to put our trust in the Lord. Isn't that right? He's the one that fights our battles. And so he said, be strong in the grace. And the things that you've heard of me, commit to faithful men. Then he turned around the second part. He said, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier. As an excellent soldier, as a noble soldier, endure hardship. Hardships include persecutions, misunderstandings, oppositions. Endure hardships. When I read that, it just put some strength in me, you know, because I had had a tough week, man, battling with the spiritual forces. And, and not people, but spiritual forces and uh, but uh, after I, he brought me to this scripture, it just put some strength there. Yeah, you're right. We are in a warfare. I kind of momentarily forgot. We're in a battle here. And I remember God telling me one time, he said, son, be strong and fight the Lord's battles. Boy, that put strength in me right away. That's right. This is the Lord's battle. Hallelujah. And young Timothy, let me tell you, be strong and fight the Lord's battle. Hallelujah. God is counting on you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then he said to Timothy, uh, no man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life. 
that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Now, he doesn't mean, you know, the family life and affairs of this world and life is on. It doesn't mean you don't get involved at all. But what he's basically saying, when those things be, uh, uh, present an entanglement and keep you from the, your number one priority, that's when you must understand what's first and foremost as a soldier in the army of God. And people that are enlisted in Uncle Sam's army, they don't really, they're not supposed to get involved in civilian life. I'm told, uh, otherwise they can go AWOL when they're supposed to be in serving, right? Yeah, so it's important that when we're in the army of God as Christian soldiers that we understand. So we want to be good soldiers in the army of God. We endure these hardships, these persecutions. Sometimes we're persecuted and everybody's not going to love you. Isn't that right? Sometimes we'll be misunderstood. People are, that are not in your role and in your position, sometimes you'll be misunderstood. They're not there. They're not in your role. So God hasn't given them what he's given you. You don't know what God's talking to, to the leadership about. Or, or you don't know what God is saying. So you're not qualified to judge them. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. That's what God was saying to me just recently. They don't know what I'm saying to you. They don't know how I deal with you. So, but Paul, but for me, he says, he says, go on, endure misunderstandings. Go on, endure it. You're going to have that. People misunderstood Jesus. Isn't that right? They quoted him and, and, and blamed him for stuff, but Jesus didn't get sidetracked. Isn't that right? So we can't get sidetracked when people say bad things or they're talking and running their mouth. We can't get sidetracked. We've got to keep that focus. So that we might please him that called us into service. Good soldier. That's what God is calling us to do. <clears throat> so he, then he says, opposition. Yeah, we're going to get opposition from the devil. Isn't that right? I mean, for me to think that I wouldn't get no opposition is crazy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's almost insanity to think that I'm not going to get opposition and I'm in the kingdom of light and that Satan and his demons are in the kingdom of darkness uh, and for me to expect that he's not going to try to stop what God is doing in my life, I'm going a little insane. The reality is this. Light and darkness don't go together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you speak, sometimes I've discovered when you speak truth, people get mad. I've discovered that. You say, well, why would people get mad? Because truth ain't in all everybody. You know what I'm saying? Some people need deliverance. And when people need deliverance, demons will fight out against you. Okay, I don't want to get too heavy in that now. But I've discovered that sometimes when you speak the truth, people get mad. But you endure opposition as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That's what God is looking. You stand the test of time. Tell the truth. Hallelujah in love. And as you speak the truth in love, stand flat footed. Don't bat your eye. Speak the truth. Stand for something. I heard somebody say that if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. God is counting on the Timothys of our day. Paul told Timothy, it's not going to be easy. You looked at my life. You see how difficult it's been. He said, uh, at my first answer, I had to go before for Nero. Uh, uh, and and, and, and uh, because of the imperial persecution, it was so great. He said, I, I wanted to, people in Asia that knew my life, I, I wanted them to come and testify on my behalf, but I couldn't get one person to stand and testify on my behalf. After all these years of service, after all these churches that I established, Paul said, not one person would stand on my behalf. He could have said, God, I'm, 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 getting, I'm giving up. This ain't fair. It ain't right. But instead, he looked at Timothy and said, you know my life. He said, you endure that hardness as a good soldier. He said, no man stood no, at my first answer. Nobody stood with me. He said, but the Lord stood with me. 
and strengthen me. And God will stand with you and he'll strengthen you. But you got to stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As a good soldier, can he count on you? Hallelujah. Can he count on you? Hallelujah. When the going gets tough, can he count on you? Will you turn back? Hallelujah. Will you complain? Hallelujah. I remember I've, there's been many times I was tempted to complain. In fact, sometimes I did complain. Thank God he didn't leave me there. He didn't leave me there. He knows that we are but dust. He knows our frame. But he's good and merciful. And I remember one time when I was just about to buckle my knees under the load and frustrated and, 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 and my words weren't right. And I heard the Lord say strength. Just one word and strength went into my loins. And I began to stand and speak right words. Hallelujah. God is your source. Hallelujah. And he'll strengthen you for the task. He's not going to send you to a task that can't be done by his grace. Ah, Timothy, Timothy, oh, Timothy, keep that which has been committed to you, son. He looked and he saw the church age, the things that the church was going to come into. And he began to say in the last days, difficult, dangerous perilous, destructive times are going to come. Men are not going to be like what you see now. They're going to be lovers of themselves. People that call themselves Christians, they're not going to be such Christians. They're going to be able to want to live any kind of way, say any kind of thing, and still call themselves by the name of the Lord. He said, but Timothy, I'm calling you to do differently. I'm calling you to do differently. You endure hardness, endure opposition, endure persecutions, knowing that you're a soldier in the army of God. Soldier in the army. I get mad at Satan. Running around like he's somebody. Like a roaring lion. Zapping the saints here, zapping the saints here, zapping them and they buckling, zapping them as though they have no power. It bothers me. But God says, I've given to you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the devil. Endure hardship. Hallelujah. Don't be preoccupied with the things of this life. Hallelujah. Don't let them keep you from your priority of pleasing God. Hallelujah. And then he gave the example of a good soldier. Then uh, um, he says, um, being a soldier demands sacrifice, discipline, obedience, and uncompromising loyalty. Being a soldier, can he count on you, Timothy, in this army? I remember many years ago, probably 20 some years ago, I was talking about, Lord, what, what, do you, what, what do you really want concerning your body? And you know what the Lord said? He said, you know what I want? He said, I want an army. I need an army. I need an army. I need an army because the host of hell is fighting. And when I try to do something, they fight me. I need an army. And the other week, God was talking about the believers now, talking about the priesthood and talking about the intercessors. Y'all with me? God says, I got to get them in line because every time I try to move, the devil try to sabotage it because my intercessors are not on the wall. What they do is go and slap one upside the head and they get off the wall. But God says, I need soldiers in my army. The people that understand they're in a warfare. Oh, I feel a little pain. I can't go tonight. Soldiers. It's a time of battle. Ain't no time for weaklings. We got to, we got to man up. Isn't that right? Somebody say, he sounds like he's angry. I am angry at the devil. He's stopping and stopping and stopping when God speaks he keeps stopping it because we 
are not in place. We are too busy for God. So he says, Timothy, the load is heavy and the work is great. You can't untangle yourself with the affairs of this life. Then he gave an example of an athlete. He said, an athlete Verse 4, no man that the war and tangles up with the affairs of his life that he may please him who is chosen and to be a soldier. Verse 5 said, if, and if a man also strive for masters, yet he's not crowned except he strive lawfully. No doubt Paul had in mind the Olympics of that day and how some of them became nationally known. But you all know just a little bit about the Olympics, how they have to train. They drill, they train, they drill, they train for the great day of the Olympics. And what happens if one takes, is known to have taken some steroids or something that will, some enhancement drug? Aren't they disqualified? That's, that's, that's what he's saying. He said, you know, you know, in the Olympics, you know how it goes. Oh, he said, they got to play by the rules. Isn't that right? He's talking to Timothy, a man of God. He said, you got to play by the rules. You see, just because people persecute, you still got to do right. Anybody hear what I'm saying? That's what God says. No, no, no. You can't get sidetracked by, by people's attitude. You got to still keep the focus, uh, uh, the goal that I've got in mind for you to carry it out. And you got to preach the word. It doesn't matter that some won't hear, but some will hear. Isn't that right? So the athlete that competes according to the rules. Uh, you, you heard of Carrie Richardson, right? In the news recently, the lady won the fastest in the U.S. and yet, for some reason, they disqualified her. Look at somebody say, "You got to go by the rules, brother." That's the way God works. So we got to find out how God works, and then we got to stick with the rules. Then he goes and gives another example: a hardworking farmer, the hardworking farmer. The husbandman or farmer that labors must be first partaker of the fruit. Look what he said. He said, basically he's saying the farmer has to work hard. He plant, he cultivates, he waters, he weeds, and then he waits. Oh, my really, God. Hallelujah. Isn't that right? After all of his work, then he got to wait. He got to wait for the Lord to bring the increase. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Timothy. Then he says, Timothy, consider what I'm saying. And once he ponders what Paul was saying, then the Lord is going to begin to speak to him and give him some additional insight. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. That's what he's saying. God's going to give you some understanding in what I'm saying, Timothy. Now go, go to Ephesians here because I know uh, uh, um, this time slips away here. Uh, Ephesians 6 he said now this this is this is uh, uh, God put these two scriptures on my in my mind uh, Ephesians 5 now he's talking about the family talking about them the, 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 the um, husband must love the wife right and and the wives must submit to their husband right and then the children must obey their parents you know he lays this down here so this is the ideal family somebody said the ideal family and then he shifts to the battle feel are you hearing me he shifts to the battlefield and then he says verse 10 finally for the rest my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles and the Holy Spirit just kind of touched me with that against the wiles against the schemes against the strategies against the crafty assaults against the subtle ways against the cunning tactics of the devil are you getting the picture 
that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the strategies, the crafty assaults, the schemes, the plots. Anybody, are you, 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 you with me now? You understand you're in a warfare? Because the devil ain't playing, see? He says, so put on the whole armor of God, the helmet. The helmet of salvation. The sword of the spirit. And you know, let me say this. Sometimes I'm discovering that Satan will come in this manner. And if I don't have an armor in this particular area, let's say I'm, I'm not versed enough in the word of God. So I, I speak my mind. I speak my opinions. I speak my feelings. Do you think I'm going to win that battle? It ain't going to happen. Why? Because it's a spiritual battle. I need spirit to fight spiritual forces. Satan is spirit. He's not flesh. And so if I'm going to fight him, I need to know the way of the spirit. The Holy Ghost is more than a match. But I need to learn the way of the spirit. can't be saying contradictory words and when the, ah, man I feel like preaching today somehow I cannot be speaking contradictory words and win this battle it's a battle of the mind I gotta learn to subject my thoughts to the ways of God if I'm gonna win this battle Satan is we're in a battle saints and so if I'm gonna have to speak words of faith I'm gonna have to be able to say through God I shall do valiantly because God tramples down my enemies. Speak the right words. You'll get the right results. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, saints. Schemes of the devil. He plots. He slanders. He does everything he can. And, and, and what I'm learning, he is out for the juggler vein. He means us no good. His motive, his aim is to steal and to kill and to destroy. Do you think he loves you? He doesn't love you. So we've got to be mean business against the devil. The time is increasing now. And God is soon to come. God said to me, he said, the church can't do the same thing that they've been doing all along. So that means if I have ought against somebody, I got to get rid of that. Got to get rid of it. God's serious. Because the devil will use it against me. When I know that he means me no good, I must line up with the will of God if I'm going to see victory. I must learn to speak faith in difficult situations. I must learn that we walk by faith and not by sight. Somebody said, don't look like this church is going anywhere. It's all right. It's in the spirit. You'll see it. You'll see it if you get in the spirit. As long as you stay in the natural, you're going to speak natural stuff. 38 and 40 years looked like this and looked like that. That's what happened to Israel in the wilderness. It's wandering around, speaking their mind, wandering around, speaking their mind, wandering around, speaking their mind. Except two men, Joshua and Caleb, they had a different spirit. 
So we stand in faith. We stand in faith and we walk in victory. So he talks about this, these wiles. Wiles are devious or cunning strategic stratagems employed in manipulating or persuading someone to do what one wants. They're tricks, they're ploys. That's what the devil is all about. So, uh, a little crash course on the devil. Hallelujah. And so we be, not be ignorant. Paul said we're not ignorant of his devices, right? No true soldier of Jesus Christ can, ex can expect to be immune from assault of the enemy. And no Christian can afford to be neutral in this conflict. I just, I ain't going to get involved. Because somebody say, oh, no. <laughs> And then it says, in light of the seriousness of this warfare, the Christian cannot be self-reliant. But we must be continually dependent upon the Lord. In conclusion, Paul urges Timothy to undertake his calling as a soldier goes to war, trusting his general to plan the campaign and serving wholeheartedly and uncomplainingly in the ranks wherever he's needed. In personal life and in public relations with the church, he should always be the Lord's servant, not contentious, but, uh, but ready to help all people to understand the truth of God. In conclusion, this picture of the last days that Paul points out was a prophecy characterizing the condition of the church in the last day and the antidote that Paul prescribed for the influx of evil was a knowledge of the scriptures. The word of God. He said, I've fought a good fight. Before he said that, he says, uh, preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. He said, the time is coming when they will not endure sound teaching uh, but after themselves he to themselves teachers have an itching ear but he said you old man of God flee these things follow after faith hallelujah he said I'm now ready to be offered up and he said the time of my departure is at hand uh, and then he looked up I must he must have looked back over his life and saw the thing that he had accomplished uh, and he said you know what I fought a good fight I finished my course I kept the faith. I said, wow, Lord, let me be able to say that. Let me be able to say that I've fought a good fight. I kept the faith. I finished my course. Through all the trials, through all the setbacks, I, I kept the faith. Through all the persecution, the, through all the oppositions, I kept the faith. Through all the things that I went through, through all the misunderstanding, I want to be able to him, for him to say, uh, for to be able to say, I kept the faith, Lord. I finished my assignment. I've done what you called me to do. And now I know there's a crown laid up for me, which the righteous God will give to everybody. Hallelujah. And that love him. Hallelujah. So we're called up to be good soldiers. God's calling for soldiers. Soldiers. I, I've never been in the army, but I've heard some things about military. That Uncle Sam doesn't play. Because in time of war, you can't have no soldiers. That's wishy washy. <laughs> People's lives are at stake. You hear what I'm saying? You can't have soldiers like that. Some soldiers are good and all of a sudden another one's supposed to have his back and he get to hear these firing away and he gets in a cubby hole and he starts screaming, Mama! Because he can't take it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? <laughs> soldiers in this army, somebody. Soldiers in this army. Like a friend of mine said they wouldn't bear hunting. And he said, this separates the men from the boys. So they get about four or five in a group going bear hunting. And he so, so they choose who's going to shoot the, shoot the bear. And then one of them was in training. And he said, I've seen them. I've seen them. He said, and all of a sudden when they, they meet this bear, and all of a sudden they get 
jam this bear up in the corner and this bear stands up on two hind legs and spill began to come from his mouth and he began to growl and the person's got the gun and he's shaking he can't even pull the trigger we don't need soldiers like that isn't that right hallelujah come on let's give God some praise hallelujah hallelujah glory to God glory to God let's be soldiers in this army I'm so glad he's putting some stuff stiffness in my spine good God of my hallelujah hallelujah my God stiffness in the spine backbone hallelujah be truthful help people hallelujah isn't that right if you tell the truth somebody's gonna get help Hallelujah. That's what God calls somebody. It's like God says, I will, I'm building soldiers. Now think about it. If Uncle Sam won't tolerate that in his army, and God has the greatest army there is, do you know what his heavenly army is like? This army that God has is so magnificent and so powerful that, that you look in Revelation, and, 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 and God has an archangel to fight, and he had a nerve to come up against God, it's like God says, you're not qualified to fight me. So he gives Michael or somebody else to fight. Something that I created. They're no match for God. They're no match for God. God. God comes riding on a horse. And they're written on his thigh. The word of God. My God. God, my God. Whoa, Lord. That thing blesses me. Hallelujah. You serve me. Look, you, you, he may not be showing up and carrying on like you think he is, but you serving somebody awesome. I mean, he is the mightiest thing there is. Uh, you look at the greatest kings on the earth, and he's king over that king. You get the greatest lords over this earth, and he's the lord over that lord. Hallelujah. He's the lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. And he's somebody else. He's so mighty and his voice carries majesty. And they call him the lion of the tribe of Judah. Ah, glory to God. Mm. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. That means, uh, you know, I, I had one experience with the lion. That thing troubled me. Went to the zoo there and this lion was just growling a little bit. And the whole place was shaking and I couldn't figure out what in the world is going on. Just a lion. Just a lion. Grumbling a little bit. But there's a lion called the lion of the tribe of Judah. And when he roars, everything in creation will pay attention to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said when Jesus went to the tomb and called Lazarus, that he had to specify it. Because had he not specified it, everything that was did would have come up out of those two. You know why? Because he says, I'm the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. <laughs> He went to this tomb here. He began to say, Lazarus. Thank God he said, Lazarus. Because if he had said, come forth. Everything that was dead had to come forth. You're talking Jesus here. Thanks. You're talking the line of Judah. Hallelujah. It's a great God. You're serving the greatest thing that could ever come. I love it. I remember in the days when Jesus, I, I, I guess he just couldn't resist it. Yeah, they came to take him. They're going to take him now. They're going to take him. So the little soldiers come here, they come here, they're going to take him. He said, who you see? Jesus of Nazareth. And, and, you know, I know it's like, okay, I, I, it may have been easy for him to resist or it may not have been. But it's like he just wants them to understand, you know, you can't take my life. I have to lay it down. I don't care what you're trying to do. You can't take my life. So they come and say, we seek Jesus. They had the swords and stayed. And then he said... I am he. Bam! Everything went down. Ah, oh, saints, I, I want you to know that you're serving somebody awesome. Come on, let's stand and give him some glory in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Great lion of the tribe of Judah. Sweet robes of Shannon. Hallelujah. I feel it in my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're on the Lord's side and God's on your side. Hallelujah. Don't, 
Now look, look, look at somebody say, don't you take down, don't you be operating like you're scared to death. You're serving the king of glory. Hallelujah. And God is on your side. And every time you take a step forward, God's going to take a step with you right there. He said, he said, for every step you go forward, he said, I'm going to stay with you. God won't let you take a step by yourself. God is on your side. God is with you. Hallelujah. God is your refuge. Ah, glory to God. Oh, my God. God, I'm excited because God is good. And hallelujah. Remember George Batson, a missionary from overseas. He came and he was telling the story. He came back from overseas. He was so tired. He came for just for a break overseas. And, and um, he was so tired, lying on the couch in his living room. And then the devil came messing with him. And he didn't have enough strength. He was so tired. And he said, Lord, help me. And then the devil was just battering and then he said out of his belly came the spirit of Jesus and Jesus says you're bound and that demon was bound hallelujah saints you're serving somebody special you ought to give him some praise in this place give him some glory hallelujah glory to God hallelujah glory to God hallelujah God is somebody special Hallelujah, you want to strengthen the Timothys in this place. Timothy, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Be strong as a good soldier, as an excellent warrior. Wow, glory to God. Show yourself strong, hallelujah, for God is at your side. And he promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Father, I thank you. I give your name the glory. You're so wonderful. You are so marvelous. You love us with an everlasting love. Strengthen us as your soldiers in this army. Strengthen us through your word and strengthen us by your divine spirit, O oh God. For you are with us to will and to do of your good pleasure. Hallelujah, Lord. Help us now to put on that armor, Lord. Hallelujah, from head to toe. Hallelujah, the shield, the helmet, the sword of the Spirit. Sandals, preparation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everything that we need is in you. And we honor you and give your glory and your name to praise. Thank you for strengthening us today. Thank you for strengthening us today. Lord, we bless you. And thank you for the little shot in the arm. Hallelujah, that we needed to understand we're in a battle. Hallelujah, glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you for the mercies shown to us. The mercies of God. Now, Lord God, we roll over the remainder of this work to you. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping us. You care for us so much. You love us with an everlasting love. So we're going to play by the rules, God. You know, I had to commit to the Lord. I remember acting out of character. I shared with some group down there, with my brothers on two or three occasions. After the second occasion, you know what I said? I said, this is not gonna happen again. I had to commit to humbling myself. And then the third one came, a different kind. And I saw what God was trying to get from me and I said, you know what? This will not happen again. This will not happen again. What do you mean? Because whatever it takes to humble myself before God, that's what I plan to do. The devil will not get victory in this life. What about you today? What about you today? Will you come to a conclusion that the devil will not use my life in any way, form, or fashion? I belong to Jesus. And he will triumph in my life. Father, I thank you. I bless you now for the 
goodness of God. Send the anointing to heal and to set free. Ah, yes, God.